Hey everybody, so I am on my porch in this beautiful woods behind me. I'll come actually show you a little bit of our beautiful paradise. So I came across some beautiful mullen today. And if you're not familiar with mullen, it grows and these long oblong shaped leaves and they're really fuzzy and soft. You may have heard that they are also called cowboy toilet paper, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, so if you're ever camping or stuck in the woods and uh, do not have traditional toilet paper around, this is what you wanna reach for because it's really soft and fuzzy and uh, you can imagine that it would be great toilet paper. So, um, basically what I did is I just picked a bunch of the leaves and my favorite thing to do with the leaves actually is to make a tea. Um, it's really mild tasting, um, and you can use, uh, it dries really nicely. It crumbles up really nicely. Um, and it stores well for, like I said, tea. Um, but today what we're going to be doing is making a tincture, which is an alcohol extract, which is awesome if you want to store it for a much longer time or later use. Um, so we'll get into that in a few minutes, but I want to talk about the wonderful health benefits that this wild plant um, can offer us. So if you've ever seen mullen, uh, the first year it only grows the leaves in a rosette shape. Um, and then the second year it shoots up a really big tall stalk um, and it is kind of uh, has yellow flowers like the color of my shirt growing all the way up the stalk. I actually have a YouTube video, another video, showing how to make um, candles or traditionally um, used uh, torches um, that you can make with the stock and dipping it or just drizzling um, any kind of wax onto the stock and letting it dry and then you can use it as a candle or outside you can stick it in the ground and use it as a torch so that's really cool um, I have a nice stock of those always just in case and they're just fun to burn and they're fun to decorate um, but today we're just working with the leaves and um, I primarily, personally, in my own experience, have used mullen for any kind of respiratory issue. So um, this last few years, uh, of course, we have a um, primarily respiratory illness uh, that is affecting <clears throat> a lot of people. So um, it's really awesome for um, as an antispasmodic. So if you have like a really deep, rough, heavy, painful cough. Um, it really helps to soothe the lungs, soothe the entire respiratory system. Um, it almost, like in my experience, almost immediately takes away um, a cough within a few hours of consistently drinking the tea or taking um, the tincture. Um, it's awesome for uh, detoxing the lungs. So if you've been exposed, uh, like smoke exposure, if you live in an area with a lot of wildfires, um, or if you um, have a history of smoking, <clears throat> um, actually, which is kind of interesting, Native Americans and other traditional uh, cultures have actually um, smoked mullen uh, for lung support, believe it or not. So not chain smoking, but, um, you know, just a little bit of it. Um, so that's really cool. Um, it also helps relieve pain. So again, related to the respiratory, if you have a cough that is just so persistent and spasmodic in the sense that you just, it, it's like a spasm, like you can't not cough, right? Um, and after a while that gets really painful and really annoying in your chest. So it can really help, um, release, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, mucus or phlegm. So it also has expectorant properties, which just means helps expel uh, mucus. So that's really cool. Um, it's actually also been used to relieve pain. So you can use this topically. You can dry it and infuse it in an oil and make it into a skin cream or a skin salve, um, you know, for purposes of um, relieving pain or healing wounds. Um, and it's really anti-inflammatory. So again, 
um, back to the lungs if you have a lot of inflammation happening there. Um, some plants just seem to have more of an affinity to um, a certain area of the body or a certain system. And this one seems to be very particular for the lungs. Um, the flowers have also um, traditionally been infused in some kind of oil, maybe olive oil or a tallow or something um, for earaches. So you would infuse the mullein flowers and leaf if you want in the oil and um, warm it just a little bit and put drops into the ears for ear pain and ear aches, um, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take these leaves and you want to be careful if you're harvesting this from, um, you know, or wherever you're harvesting it from, make sure that you're not picking it off like a busy road. Maybe like an old country back road would be fine, um, but not off like a busy highway, um, not in an area where you even question that it could be sprayed with pesticide. Um, and then also that is not in an area where maybe animals like pets are going to be peeing and pooping on it. So this was harvested in the woods. So of course I'm not too worried about it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start with this jar. You can use any size you'd like, um, but you want to make sure you have enough plant material to fill up your container. So what we're going to do is you guys, this is so easy. And, um, what I love about tinctures is that they let their shelf stable. So we'll get to that in a second. I always kind of get ahead of myself. So I'm just going to cut this up in really small, um, pieces. You can cut it up with a knife. You can obviously use scissors if you want. Um, some people even go to the extent of blending it all up. I don't really think that's super necessary, but totally do you if that's what you want the whole idea here of um, cutting it up really small is to increase the surface area so the alcohol can really get um really get into the um um sorry i thought i saw a little bug in there not that it's a bad thing uh if there's a little bugs but <laughs> we don't really want that especially if um especially because i sell a lot of these tinctures we're not going to be adding any bugs in there. Um, but yeah, chopping it up really small just helps um, break up the cell structure um, and just help get more of the medicine out of the plant. So, as you can see, just chopping this up. And I really like to use more of the leaves, so I'm just going to set some of the stems aside. So, let's see here. And then what I do is I push it down. Oh, let's see. This needs to be cut up a little more. I like to push it, but put it down a little. You don't want to, like, pack it because, of course, you want room for your alcohol to do its work. Um, so, I'm going to just remove some of those stems here. But basically, we're going to fill this almost to the top, lightly pack it. So, with fresh plant material, you typically want to make tinctures with fresh plant material. Um, there are some exceptions. Um, some medicinal mushrooms would be an exception. But typically, we want to use fresh as that's where most of the medicine is going to be um, accessible. There is Squirrel. Um, it, my cat, Squirrel. And we named her Squirrel because she's got this really bushy tail. And she just looks like a squirrel. So... <clears throat> So we're almost to the top here and you can see it might look like I'm over filling it. She's interested over filling it a little bit, but Mullen's really puffy. So you can kind of pack it down a little bit. So let's just do a little bit more. So here we go. I would say that'll do it. So right about there. You don't really want to pack it down much more than that. Okay. So what a tincture is, I might have touched on it a little bit already, but it's an alcohol extract. So essentially, we're taking an alcohol. I like to use 100 proof. Um, you can use more than that, but it really isn't necessary to have something that strong because this is 50% alcohol. Um, this isn't like a nice expensive brand. You don't need to worry about it being like some um, super expensive brand since we're not actually like drinking it in a alcoholic drink. You're literally taking drops of it. So... We're going to go ahead and pour our alcohol over it. 
Um, so if you are going to be um, drinking this as a tea, it's really soothing to the lungs and the respiratory system. But funny enough, there's really, really fine hairs and fibers on the leaves. So you do want to make sure that you strain it well enough where um, you're not drinking those. You're filtering out the fine the hair, uh, fine hairs and fibers. Um, otherwise, it can be actually kind of irritating to the throat. So I use something called the nut milk bag, which is just really fine mesh material. You can also use a coffee filter would be fine too. Um, or just something where it's, you know, you're, it's, or you could use like an organic cheesecloth or some kind of really, really thin cloth. Um, so something to that effect. So as you can see, we're about at the top here. Um, so from here, super easy. We're just going to go ahead and cap it. And there we go. That is our tincture. So if you're curious what we're going to do with this, this is going to sit um, for about six weeks, anywhere from four to eight weeks is like the typical recommended time for a tincture to sit. Um, so this is just going to infuse. So what the alcohol is going to do is it's just going to help break down the plant and help extract the medicinal properties into the alcohol. Um, and then your finished product is going to be, of course, you're going to go ahead and dump this. You're going to strain it and your resulting liquid, your resulting alcohol is now going to be a, medis a, mullein, a medicinal mullein extract. And then from there, you're just gonna bottle it up and take maybe 30 to 60 drops of it at a time. You can mix it into a tea, um, smoothie, anything. I just like to kind of take it under my tongue and you know follow it with some water or juice or something but um what i love about tinctures is they're shelf stable so they literally given that you use a high enough alcohol percentage 80 to 100 proof is plenty and um they can remain in your medicine cabinet virtually forever because alcohol um doesn't go bad given that it's sealed well um so that is how to make a mullen tincture and i hope that i inspired you to um, use this um, if you have any kind of respiratory issue or any kind of swellings really anti-inflammatory and I am going to dry the rest of this for tea just to have it on hand um, I really like to harvest a lot of plants during this time of year like uh, spring summer and fall um, and then that way I can have enough to last me um, through the winter season um, for my own personal use, but also, of course, to sell on my online shop at marlosorganics.com. So that is my video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and let me know if you have any questions. And I'll also go ahead and link my how to make um, mullen stock candles uh, below if you're interested. So hope you guys have a beautiful day. Talk to you later.